Jurors in Bill Cosby's sexual assault case started their second day of deliberations today after a bizarrely short six minute presentation from the defense. Now the jury will decide whether Cosby is guilty of three counts of aggravated indecent assault, each of which carries a possible 10 year sentence. Now today they went back to the judge and asked four questions, some of which they asked him to repeat parts of Cosby's statements to authorities and asked the court to define the phrase without her knowledge in one of the charges against him, obviously probably talking about consent there. Now just a for a little bit of background. This is the case of Andrea Constand, who is just one of about 60-ish women who have come forward and alleged that Bill Cosby sexually assaulted them. Now, prosecutors called 12 witnesses over a week of testimony and Constand was chief among them. In clear and firm terms, she said that Cosby, a powerful Temple alum, mentored her and took an interest in her career like a father figure. Now, Constand, who is a former Temple University women's basketball staffer who says Cosby took advantage of his role as her mentor and slipped her pills that left her frozen and unable to stop him from touching her breasts and genitals. In fact, she mentioned a quote that he said when he was doing so saying that put them down, they're your friends. Uh, they will take the edge off. Now, the defense. The pills are the her pills. friends? Her the pills are friends. her friends. Uh. Um, and that they will take the edge off. Now, defense attorneys argued that the sexual contact was part of a consenting relationship between Cosby and Constant, even though Cosby has admitted to giving her pills, but said they were three Benadryl, not anything that was any more uh, effective or a regular sort of rape drug that we're used to seeing. Uh, the Cosby defense presentation was startlingly fast, like I mentioned. In the beginning, there was one witness, a police detective, who was on the stand for a total of six minutes, which is obviously a very sharp contrast to the five days that the prosecution took for their presentation. But I want to call to light something. Uh, that I think a lot of the media is missing in this. So when all of these headlines came out, they're like, "Oh, their defense was only five minutes, six minutes," and then they said that they rested, and that was really the focus here. But I want to call to attention something that they said in their closing, that his lawyer said in his closing argument, saying that Cosby was a flawed man, an unfaithful husband, but also a brilliant comedian who not only taught us how to smile, but how to love each other no matter what we look like. Which to me is just so absolutely disturbing to use that as some sort of, okay, maybe he did some, you know, effed up shit. But he made us laugh, guys. <laughs> he brought love to televisions. I mean, like in real life, total piece of shit. But he made us laugh. So whatever, he raped a woman. That's basically what they're saying, which is so unbelievably messed up and that's really what they pinned their entire argument on was showing that he was a good guy and not showing and not using other people to sort of um, as witnesses to sort of uh, defend his actions but just saying oh but he's like come on you've seen him on TV he likes jello how could somebody who likes jello yeah. be have you guys in seen prison? ghost dad yeah I have a problem with Mc, Mr. McMonagall who is yeah. defense attorney's general description of events because the way he speaks, it's almost as if to totally misunderstand how a victim would react mm. after the fact. And it's a lot of, it does sound like victim blaming. Like why would it, why would you still be in contact with him? It, it preys on a key misunderstanding of how a victim's mindset could be after the traumatic mm -hmm. event after this. And it, it's gross to me how, how dirty you would have to play to like, mischaracterize that. Yeah, I actually don't think it's a misunderstanding. I actually think it was very purposeful. I think it was very like a lot of the times in, in rape uh, cases, they will try to make the witness or make the victim mm -hmm. look like uh, they're unstable or mm -hmm. that they wanted it, right? And so they're saying that it was consensual, even though he's admitted to giving her pills. And like, not that this would, you know, has too much weight, but she's a lesbian. So like you can it's very difficult to prove that it's consensual. Yeah. Well even well, if you call, I'm sorry John. The Benadryl, you know, your little friend and it's not Which don't. It don't do that. But also if it's not the uh, a hard rape drug per se. Mm -hmm. What is the point of Benadryl? Cosby used Benadryl to make him sleepy. It's there to make you sleepy. I yeah. I 
I don't see how that's incredibly different from the the point of. Yeah, it might be a little bit weaker, but it's still the same. It, like if you're gonna say it wasn't the really bad drug that he would have theoretically used to make right? her sleepy, he used this other one that makes you sleepy. I would have I would have gone with a different direction in that. And yeah, so I mean, it, it seems like that sort of defense is pretty common in cases mm -hmm. like this, where they're basically hoping. Like, please, just think he's a good guy. Think that she's clearly, you don't know her, you know him. You grew up with him, he's probably not lying right. You don't know her, she's kind of shifty. She maybe just is in this for the TV. And they're hoping that people will will buy, buy that. It seems like a weak defense though, when you consider that those jurors have got to be aware of the fact that if not literally, Behind her, 59 or so other women who are saying that he's done the same thing or possibly even worse. At that point, I think that simply saying he's a reputable guy, he couldn't have done the things that you think he did or that they're saying he did. That 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 doesn't hold up when you've got literally scores of women claiming that he's done some sort of assault. Yeah, so I have two points that I want to comment on that. The first being that even when the media is talking about this, and I don't think this is on purpose, but they're trying, honestly, they're trying to like thesaurus the way that they're talking about Cosby. So they'll be like, sweater wearing America's dad and still really <laughs> painting him. Like I was reading one of these articles articles, um, I don't remember if it was a CNN or, or something like that, but one of them said like, like sweater wearing, like America's dad, like no, you still can't paint him in this positive light because that's going to influence the way that people look at him. And then I think the other point that you bring up when talking about how, oh, she's probably in this to like get TV time or be in the limelight, I think anybody, whether they be you know woman or man who has experienced any sort of sexual assault, I they know that there's no way that they would voluntarily, anybody would voluntarily go under the scrutiny of having to deal with one of these yeah. cases. I just mean, for the these, record, these I'm saying are, they're saying she yeah, did that. I'm not no, saying no, no, she no, did no, that. No, 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 I know, but they're, I'm just saying for people who are maybe saying that, oh, she wants her 15 minutes, whatever, like they are dragging this woman and she is so unbelievably brave to go stand up for those 60-ish mm -hmm. women that are behind her. Um, and so I really applaud her for doing that because I can't even imagine how difficult this must be. That must have been her dealing with that in the first place, dealing with years of having to know that that happened and having that and the scars of that and then now having to testify against sweater wearing America's dad. Yeah, pill popping America's creepy uncle. <laughs> That's what they should change it. I think, I mean, it's fair, you get to describe him, right? That's what the media says. Yeah, I think it's true. Young Turks membership creates independent media. Believe me. No ads. Believe me. All the shows. Believe me. On demand. Believe me. Support independent media. Believe me. It's awesome, tremendous, you'll love it. Believe me. And by the end, you'll be thinking, you know, I'm like a smart person. TYTnetwork.com slash join.